welcome to A14. It's strange that sometimes we pass something every day and we scarcely notice it or give it a second thought. Yet when somebody points it out to us, it's a real surprise. Today I'm going to visit the place we pass on the A14 towards Felixstowe perhaps every day. Yet some people in town have never heard of it. And here it is on the eastbound carriageway, just after the Bucklesham turning. At first glance, it's some derelict buildings overgrown by woodland. Ask people what they think it is. Some will say it's an electricity substation. Others, that it's a pumping station of some kind. Which would have suited the original builders of the site back in 1943, because RAF Trimley Heath, as it was known, was hush hush, top secret and all that. So what was it? It was a radar station linked to Borty, just a few miles away. It was known as a Ground Control Intercept Radar Station, or GCI. Britain's early radar installations, like the one at Borty, could only detect the presence of aircraft coming over the North Sea. It was down to ground observers and RAF aircraft to locate and intercept. There was little radar cover in land. The idea of GCI was to get an exact bearing on aircraft wherever they were and guide anti-aircraft guns or airborne fighters to the target. This new radar was too late for the Battle of Britain but made it much more difficult for German aircraft attacks later in the war. Of course the site is now derelict and overgrown but some of the essential installations can still be identified. Trimley Heath had a rotating antenna and its position is marked by the overgrown road on the aerial photo. On the ground it's now overgrown and inaccessible. At the other end of the site was the control room and backup generators and these were sighted at a distance so as to not interfere with the antenna. These are still intact but the site is overgrown and quite a mess with the local vandals adding their contribution. There were a series of other buildings on the site to house the staff that maintained the station. There were also a series of wooden buildings that have long since been removed. The roadways are still visible, but now they're very overgrown. After the war, the station was placed on reserve, but a fire in the early 1950s effectively ended its days as an active radar station, and it finally closed in 1953 and fell into dereliction. As I said earlier, it was a hush-hush establishment. The general public knew very little of radar, and this of course was cutting-edge technology in 1943, so it was completely top secret. Various stories exist about hidden underground installations, but most people are now agreed that there was nothing of the sort at Trimley Heath. The trouble is, the more secretive something is, the stranger the legends that develop around it. In, with our modern perspective, we know that RAF Trimley has yielded up most of its secrets and we know now that it was a radar station, pure and simple, nothing else. Whenever something is a secret and people don't understand what it's about, there are always conspiracy stories. Whatever may be the issues, when there's a lack of transparency, there will always be somebody who thinks the worst or at least are way off the mark. This is particularly true of God and of spiritual things, because down the centuries people have felt that the spiritual is so inaccessible that only certain people are actually qualified to communicate with the spirit world or with God or whatever. And they've been given various names as well, uh, priests and shamans and mediums and witch doctors and holy men or whatever. And of course, they're supposed to be able to tell us everything that we need to know about the spiritual world. And many of them, of course, do it for a small fee or maybe a large fee. That's not what the Bible says about God. Quite the reverse, actually. God has gone out of his way to get to know people. Here's what Paul said to a group of Christians in Ephesus about God's secrets. In all his wisdom and insight... God did what he had purposed and made known to us the secret plan he'd already decided to complete by means of Christ. 
Actually, the secret plan is revealed to anybody who wants to read it, because it's all in the Bible. But what is it that God has purposed in Christ? What is the plan? Well, this is something else that Paul tells us some more about. Glory to God, who can make you strong in the faith by the good news that I tell people and by the message about Jesus Christ. The message about Christ is the secret that was hidden for long ages past, but is now made known. It's been made clear through the writings of the prophets. And by the command of the eternal God, it's been made known to all nations that they might believe and obey. Here at Trimley Heath, what was once a secret is no longer a secret. And it's the same with God. The revealed secret is about Christ and it's intended for all nations. That means everybody. God doesn't want people to find him untouchable and distant, but he wants to have a people who know all about him. And how do we get to know him? The words in Christ give us a clue. If God can be known and we don't know him, then there must be something keeping us apart from him. There is, and it's the things we do wrong. The things the Bible calls sin. Sins are things that we do that are wrong, that we know are wrong. Things we say that we know we shouldn't have said. Things that we do that we know we shouldn't have done. And all those things that we maybe haven't done, which we know we should have. God himself became a human being in order that he might deal with the issue of our sin. And Jesus did this by his death on the cross. Jesus rose from the dead. He's alive and he can be known. And being a Christian isn't just believing something. It's coming into a living relationship with a living Jesus Christ. And by his Holy Spirit, he becomes part of us. Here's a bit more about God's secrets revealed. This is Paul speaking again. And I have been made a servant of the church by God, who gave me this task to perform for your good. It is the task of fully proclaiming his message, which is the secret he hid through all past ages from all human beings, but is now revealed to his people. God's plan is to make known his secret to his people, this rich and glorious secret which he has for all peoples. And the secret is that Christ is in you, which means that you will share in the glory of God. Now that might seem a very mysterious kind of thing to say, but people have discovered that down the centuries that it's absolutely true that Jesus can be known in a very, very personal way. And it's not something for a favoured sort of person either. It's available to anyone and everyone, whoever they are or whatever they've done. And if you're listening to this and you don't know Jesus, then it can be you too. All you have to do is to make the decision to know him and follow him. So top secret, not Jesus. Thanks for listening and may God bless you.